Good evening and welcome to the national news broadcast on Channel Lai. We are ready to bring you the top stories from home and around the world. I'm Natalia Virvardhana. Hello there. Good evening. I'm Nikit Karnaratna. We'll start off with the headlines as usual. The government reiterates that there has not been any change in the state policy on the application of organic fertilizer. A 24 hour long vaccination campaign is being conducted today as well. The opposition leader receives the COVID vaccine. The corona threat appears to be worsening in Indonesia, with the death toll exceeding 100,000. Australia, New Zealand and France pledge for development efforts in many fields in Sri Lanka. A proposal to increase the minimum salary of private employees by 2,500 rupees has been presented to Parliament. On to those and other stories in detail. The government reiterates that no change has been made pertaining to government's policy on utilisation of organic fertiliser. No permission has been granted for the importation of chemical fertiliser for the use in local agriculture. There has not been any change in the policy decision taken by the President that only organic manure should be used in agricultural activities. There will not be any alteration of this decision in the future as well. The Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval to a proposal on the importation of plant nutrients made out of natural minerals and chelated particles, presented by the Minister of Agriculture to the Cabinet on the 31st of May this year. Presently, the importation of these nutrients are being carried out under the court proscribed by the Gazette Notification Number 2226-48. Therefore, the relevant Gazette Notification has been revised in order to implement the Cabinet approval on the memorandum submitted by the Minister of Agriculture. Accordingly, the Development of Agriculture and other related institutions have granted approval under the Special Licence System for the importation of specialised varieties of fertiliser according to the Import and Export Control Order No. 11 of 2021, issued by the Minister of Finance on the 30th of July this year. Only organic fertilisers which have been granted approval under international organic manure standards are being permitted for application in local agriculture. According to a census conducted by the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Botanical Gardens and other relevant state institutions, only nitrogen-based minerals or chemical fertilizer and chelated mineral and micronutrients are permitted to be imported under the direct supervision of the relevant institutions for a period of six months. They could be utilized only for protected agricultural usage in greenhouses and also in registered institutions dealing in aquatic nutrient farming and air-based nutrition cultivations and also for cultivations on exotic plants. Permission has been granted through the relevant licenses for the importation of fertilizer capsules or packeted items weighing 10 kilograms or less of fertilizers enriched with three plant nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. All the institutions related to the importation of all fertilizers are being permitted to import only to fulfill their requirements. In addition, permission has been granted for the importation of nitrogen extracts and mineral type potassium. These are not categorized as chemical fertilizers. It has been reiterated that the government guarantees to uphold the rights of citizens to gain access to a meal devoid of poisonous material and to create a healthy and productive population. It is a pledge given under the Saubage Dakma policy statement that Sri Lanka's production capacities should be expedited through complete application of organic fertilizer in the agricultural field in the coming decade. The second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine has been given to 116,664 persons under the COVID immunization program. Provision of the second dose is being successfully conducted for the fourth consecutive day. Vaccinating of the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine in the Western province on those who have received the first dose of the same vaccine is being conducted since the first of this month. So far, 370,761 doses have been inoculated. The AstraZeneca vaccine program in the Western province will be conducted till the sixth of this month. The vaccination program in the Vihara Mahadevi Park is also being conducted successfully. The program is being carried out throughout 24 hours of the day with the assistance of the Sri Lanka Army. The Army has also organized musical concert for the mental relief of the general public arriving at the vaccination center. A 24-hour long vaccination program is also being conducted at the Diyatawina premises in Battaramulla. 
Our correspondent has reported of the influx of large crowds to receive AstraZeneca vaccine at the center. The second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine is also being provided successfully at the premises of the Bandanak International Conference Hall premises. The first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine is also being provided to the people in the Kegal district. At the NM Perera Stadium in Yatiantota, 1,800 teachers in the Dehiovit Education Zone were given the first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine yesterday. And meanwhile, under the COVID immunization program, so far, 13,065,376 vaccines have been inoculated. 25,509 persons have received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine yesterday. The second dose has been provided to 116,664. The first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine has been provided to 144,766 persons yesterday. The second dose has been given to 9,220 persons. 1,155 persons have also received the Moderna vaccine yesterday. The total number of persons who have received vaccines in the past seven days amounted to 2,713,958. 297,314 persons were inoculated yesterday alone. The percentage of the population above the age of 30 years in the country who have received at least one dose of the vaccine has increased to 91.17. The percentage in the Gampa district in the western province was at 94.07 and in the Kalutara district the percentage was at 87.86 and in the Kalamba district 83.45. The health division say that people in 16 districts have been provided with doses of the vaccine, exceeding 75%. These districts were Gaul, Mathara, Hambantata, Kurunagala, Anuradhapura, Polonnaru, Kandy, Mathale, Nuarelia, Ratnapura, Badulla, Ampara, Batiklo, Trincomali, Mena and Waunia. 1,720 COVID-19 afflicted patients have been identified in the country today. Meanwhile, 1,754 fully cured patients have left hospitals today. It has also been detected that 22 inmates and four staff members in a home for the aged in Ganevatha in the Piliandala Medical Officer of Health Division were infected with the COVID-19 disease. They have been subjected to quarantine at the location itself. These patients will be given treatment through the COVID-19 unit affiliated to the Piliandala Regional Hospital. The health divisions add that the patients will be hospitalized according to the need. Certain media have reported recently regarding patients at the Ragama Teaching Hospital have been subjected to numerous difficulties as the number of patients have exceeded the bed capacity of the hospital. Minister of Health Pavitra Vanyarachi, upon focusing attention on the issue, was engaged in an inspection tour at the hospital today. The government of the United Arab Emirates has decided to relax travel restrictions on passengers who are using six countries, including Sri Lanka, as transit passenger locations. Accordingly, the travel restrictions imposed on passengers arriving from India, Pakistan, Nigeria, Nepal and Uganda are scheduled to be withdrawn from tomorrow. Those who have received both doses of the COVID immunization vaccines and those who have a validated place of residence are permitted are allowed to arrive in the United Arab Emirates. Two surgical oxygen units manufactured by the Sri Lankan Air Force for COVID patients are handed over to the Director of Health Services in the Central Province, Dr. Nihal Veera Surya, today. Air Force Commander Air Marshal Sudarshan Apathirana has also attended the ceremony held in this connection. The new treatment unit at the Kegol General Hospital was presented a stock of equipment today. Accordingly, 40 beds with oxygen facilities and several equipment were handed over. State Minister Kanaka Herath was also present on this occasion. The items have been provided with the financial contributions of the Engineering Association of the Podujana Peramuna, the Brandix Institute and several other resource persons. The value of the equipment was at 20 million rupees. The Health Ministry has evaluated the data reports on COVID immunization vaccinating program for school children. There had been concern raised about a video circulating in the social media and many other places related to a crowded hospital somewhere in Sri Lanka. And this type of situation can arise at any time in any hospitals as most of the facilities in a hospital is almost every day fully saturated. And if there is any unprecedented influx of patients with one disease or the other, this type of situation can occur. And this has been observed previously also, especially when there 
Paris dengue and several other outbreak situations that we have experienced in the country. The health authorities and the hospital management usually take necessary action to rectify such situations within hours or as soon as possible. This incident also will be discussed today at the meeting that we are going to have with the Secretary Ministry of Health and the other high officials and this will be discussed and we will inform you what actions will be taken with regard to the kind of situations to prevent any more adverse reactions or adverse incidents as a result of such overcrowding in hospitals. With regards to the immunization of school children, again the data is being reviewed by experts at the Ministry of Health and there is an advisory committee on communicable disease which is the apex body that gives the recommendations on the vaccination and related activities to the Ministry of Health. With their recommendation, the Ministry of Health will take necessary steps to introduce this vaccine as and when such recommendations are made by the advisory committee to the Ministry of Health. Police media spokesman and senior DIG Ajit Rohan has said that inter-provincial travel restrictions are being implemented continuously. He added that only government servants and those engaged in essential services are permitted to travel between the provinces. Yesterday we have arrested 113 persons in respect of the offences of COVID-19, health rules and regulations. In addition to that, 53,143 persons have been arrested in connection with the same offences since the 30th of October 2020 to date. In addition to that, 103 persons have been sent back to their original places along with 53 vehicles as they were trying to cross the provincial border. The provincial restriction order remains as it is, therefore no one is allowed to cross the provincial border unless they are government servants or the employees of essential services. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa has made a note in his official Facebook page saying that he has received a COVID immunization vaccine. He further says that he has obtained the vaccine on the stern advice of his physicians. Quote, I have received the vaccine today upon strict instructions of the physicians who have treated me. The doctors have sternly warned me that failure to get vaccinated may lead to re-affliction of the COVID disease and it could become fatal. I have exceeded their orders, taking into consideration my present health condition. End of quote. Although the opposition leader says that he has received the vaccine, he has not stated officially on what type of vaccine he has taken. Opinions were expressed on this issue in Parliament today. A parliamentarian said that all parliamentarians have been vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. He added that they came to know that the opposition leader had received the Pfizer vaccine. The MP has inquired as to how the opposition leader received this vaccine, which could not be afforded by the ordinary citizens. The opposition leader has expressed his views on vaccination while participating recently in a religious program at the Ganga Rama Vihare following his recovery from the COVID disease. Opposition leader Sajid Prebhadasa said that people of the country should be vaccinated prior to them receiving the vaccine. The opposition leader added that they are working based on this policy. He further said that he does not wish to be vaccinated until all the people were vaccinated according to health guidelines. The opposition leader further said that this is their contribution to the people of the country. Meanwhile, Minister of Finance Basil Rajapaksha has met High Commissioner of Australia and New Zealand and the French Ambassador today. The objective of the discussions was to strengthen cooperation and enhance mutual relations. The meeting between Australian High Commissioner David John Holly and Minister Basil Rajapaksha has taken place at the Ministry of Finance. The High Commissioner has appreciated Sri Lanka's organic farming program and added that his country is hoping to extend technical assistance to enhance organic fertilizer production in the country. He added that they will be looking into the possibilities of utilizing to a higher extent of the services of the Colombo Harbour for merchant vessels heading towards Australia across the Sri Lankan Sea Territory. The Australian High Commissioner has also pledged to extend assistance for the development in the field of local livestock resources. He added that his country is also pleased over the measures to implement the Act on Animal Protection and Welfare. 
Minister Basil Rajapaksha has made a request on this occasion for the provision of investment and technical assistance to the Special Economic Zone dedicated for the proposed value-added agricultural produce to be located adjacent to the Hambantata Harbour and the Mattala Airport. It has also been pointed out that large number of Sri Lankan students are engaged in educational activities in Australia. The High Commissioner further said that they will also look into the possibilities of commencing in Sri Lanka higher educational institutions affiliated to the leading Australian universities in the country. French and Eric Levater has also conducted talks with Minister Basil Rajapaksha at the Finance Ministry. He said on this occasion that the French government has taken measures to commence to set up six small-scale animal production farms in Sri Lanka. Work in four of these farms has reached the final stage in constructions. The ambassador has also agreed to provide necessary support to the island in the task of reactivating the tourism industry. He further said that more opportunities are expected to be provided in the French market for high-quality Sri Lankan teas. New Zealand High Commissioner Michael Edward Appleton in his talks with Minister Basil Rajapaksha said that his country is keen on enhancing bilateral cooperation in the fields of education and sports. He added that his country is also willing to provide necessary technical assistance in the development of the livestock resources. Minister Basil Rajabaksha said that Sri Lanka values the support extended by friendly countries for the normal maintenance of activities in the fields of economics and social affairs. The minister further said that Sri Lanka gave priority to its non-aligned policy when dealing in an ambiguous manner with countries in the world. A proposal to increase the minimum salary of private sector employees by 2,500 rupees was presented to Parliament today. It was submitted by Minister of Labour Nimal Siripala de Silva. Accordingly, with the passing of the draft bill, the current minimum salary of private sector workers of 13,500 rupees will be increased to 16,000 rupees. President Gotabe Rajapaksha has also attended the Parliament session today. The President, upon arrival at the Parliament Chamber, was received by Leader of the House Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana and Chief Government Whip Minister Johnston Fernando. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha, along with Government Parliamentarians and the President, has entered the Parliament Chamber. The President has listened to the oral questions directed under the standing orders. Thereafter, President Gotabe Rajapaksha was engaged in a friendly discussion with the Government and opposition parliamentarians at his office in the Parliament premises. Minister Nimal Suripala de Silva said that the minimum salary of employees in the private sector has not been increased for the past six years. At present, the employers in the private sector are bound by law to provide a minimum salary of 13,500 rupees to their employees. The minister added that with the proposed 2,500 rupees salary increase, the minimum salary of private sector workers will be increased to 16,000 rupees. The minister further said that the president, through his Saubhagya Dakhma policy statement, has pledged to increase the minimum salary of employees in the private sector. He added that they are extremely pleased over the constant guidance being provided by the Prime Minister to fulfil this pledge. Minister Bandula Gunavardhana says that if paddy was purchased from farmers in an unreasonable manner and hoarded in storages, steps will be taken to confiscate such paddy stocks. He was addressing a media briefing in Colombo today. Minister Bandula Gunavardhan said that the intermediate racketeers are attempting to enter the market and to gradually increase the price of paddy. The minister further said that they have to inform the general public that paddy being purchased by any middleman from the farmers will be confiscated. Necessary legislation will be approved in this connection. The merchants are allowed to sell the items at a price lower than the maximum retail price prescribed by the government. The government will implement to the letter the program to bring law and order. The Ministry of Urban Development and Housing says that the Building Materials Corporation has been turned into a profit-making institution after several years. An income earning plan exceeding 1,000 million rupees is scheduled to be implemented in the month of September alone. The BMC, which has received a monthly income of 1.5 million rupees during the previous regime, was able to increase its revenue to 155 million rupees by the month of June this year. The corporation has been successful to increase the revenue nearly threefold by July this year. Many popular and acknowledged commodity items are being sold under different brand names at the showroom of the Building Materials Corporation. 
The corporation's marketing division is scheduled to call open tenders and to implement many other projects to further enhance the revenue. The consumers have also been provided the opportunity to order items online. Government servants are being provided goods at a discount. The BMC also functions as the main supplier to government institutions. Measures have been taken to expand and increase the efficiency of the services through the creation of a supplier's network and direct purchasing of building materials and other commodity items. That's all the news for today. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Good night. Good night and stay safe.